At the core of Alice Darling is a tale of emotional abuse, the anxiety, the isolation, the uncertainty in a movie that uses limited dialogue to bring us inside the mind of a woman living in fear of her own partner. That woman is played by actress Anna Kendrick, who recently revealed that she's lived through her own experience with emotional abuse. Kendrick sat down with our Mona Kosar Abdi to open up about her chilling new movie and the hopes she hopes it brings to survivors. Alice, darling. I lied to him. He has every right to be angry. Lied? About what? About being here. There's my girl. Anna Kendrick, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Of course. I'm really excited to talk about your powerful drama, Alice Darling. And you play Alice, who is dealing with the effects of being in this psychologically abusive relationship with a boyfriend who is manipulative. He isolates her, and he convinces her that her friends are bad for her. This movie, you say, was shot in under a month. What boundaries did you have to create playing a character that herself doesn't feel safe? Yeah, I mean, I felt really fortunate to be surrounded by people who came to this film because they related very deeply to the experience of being in and around psychological abuse. And I think sometimes that's all you need to be like, okay, I'm, I'm not gonna get overwhelmed. I'm actually gonna be okay because I'm surrounded by people who make me feel really safe. That support is very important. And I noticed that there's actually limited dialogue in this movie, particularly between Alice and Simon. Yeah. Why is that important to show that kind of vulnerability, to pay attention to her body language? For a movie that is about a, an emotionally abusive relationship, it really stays with Alice's experience because sometimes if we're in a situation like that, we tend to get lost in cataloging, like, well, they said this and they did this and was that wrong or wasn't that wrong? And the thing that's more important is like, what's happening to me? How do I feel? And listening to that can be so hard because I, I think, you know, culturally we're sort of conditioned to not listen to ourselves and to just sort of logic our way out of things. And I thought it was just such a beautiful and brave choice to um, just stay with this woman and watch her. And it's almost like daring the audience to say, like, like tell me she's not being abused. Uh, I'm trying to look out why you would choose to hurt me I so deliberately. No, I, I mean, I just wanted to hang out with my friends. Right. So you want to be here with them at my expense? You yourself admitted that you are a survivor of abuse. What was important for you to portray through Alice? It was important to me to have the movie live in that uncertain space because that's the experience when you're going through it is kind of playing mind games with yourself. And, you know, a lot of people have told me that, like, halfway through the movie, they're not sure if Alice is making it up. And I actually think that's kind of great because it really helps illuminate what the experience is inside of a person who's going through it because you aren't sure if you're making it up. <laughs> Alice. Please, please go away. Please go away. Please go away. In the beginning, she was kind of justifying what he was saying to her about even something as small as like the sugar, sugar's bad for you, but you see how those are elements of how he was being manipulating her, for example. Yeah, I love that little through line about the sugar because it's a perfectly fair thing for someone to say, sugar's not good for your body, sugar's not healthy. But uh, then you have to kind of pull apart, like, why are you saying that to me? And mm -hmm. like, it sort of invites the audience to trust this woman who, by the way, is not doing very well. Alice. I can't do another thing wrong. Alice, what does that even mean? No, I lied to him, he doesn't even know that I'm here. What? I mean, he does now. <laughs> he called me. Well, why did you lie to him? Because I'm bad. What? And there's actually a few lines that she kept repeating. What are the chances that I don't come out on the other side? What are the chances that I don't want to? Where will you put your shame? Why do you think survivors tend to question their own experience? I mean, I can't you know, speak to anybody, anybody's experience but my own, but I would get trapped in those kind of loops of, um, of trying to just figure it out. I never really knew what I even meant by that, but my brain was just working overtime because I just had the sense that if I could just be a little bit better and if I could just read one more book on communication or something, things would turn around. And it's really difficult to, um, 
give up that control and just grieve and like get out. For me, that really resonated because it was so common for me to get trapped in a, a loop of um, this very false sense that if I just went over everything one more time, I, I could figure out how to make everything okay and how to get safe. And that justification is also why uh, survivors of abuse are likely to go back to their situations, to go back to their abusers. And there's a line in the movie where Simon says, I give it a week. Mm. What do you hope that people who are in similar situations or have dealt with similar situations get out of this movie? The most that I can hope for is that it's a drop in the bucket of questioning and beginning to get curious about what might be happening to them or to a friend. I think that one thing that might be um, actionable is the sense that if you do know someone who is going through it, that like just being there and accepting that there's nothing you can do, which is the hardest thing, might be the most valuable thing. Definitely, and on the other side, what message do you hope that it sends to perpetrators of abuse? The hardest thing for people in these kinds of relationships is that I think that the inner experience of the victim and the perpetrator are remarkably similar. Mm -hmm. And I think that there are perpetrators who likely come out of it feeling like they were um, victimized, which I think we all deserve to kind of stay curious about that and heal from whatever is creating potentially bad behavior in us. People know you for movies such as Pitch Perfect. I got my ticket for the long way round. And you play more lighthearted roles. I had a thing the other day where I was walking past a window and I caught my reflection and I swear to God, I was like, who's that lady? Ugh. Like, who's this grown woman? Yeah. Why was it important for you to play Alice at this time in your career? The fact that the subject matter was so close to home was uh, something even more potentially rewarding but also scary. I wanted to kind of see what would happen if I put all of that down and like, put down all the armor. It was, yeah, personally very rewarding to do that. Anna Kendrick, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it and appreciate you sharing your experience as well. Thank you so much for having me. And thank you so much to Mona for bringing us that story. And you can watch Alice Darling exclusively in AMC theaters nationwide starting this Friday, January 20th. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.